question yeah i i just saw the the video of the new open ai demo where the robot was like uh, cleaning the table and stuff uh, and i was uh, i was extrapolating it and talking um, about and talking about it in a conversational way right yeah with arms and ahs a very human way right yeah and i was extrapolating to how that would impact uh, like the mental health industry uh, where like where like people are like can they replace like a therapist or a, or a psychologist uh, totally well, I don't know about totally, but sure, they can. They definitely be a lot more cost-effective way to get uh, psychotherapeutic help, and their fund of knowledge is, is way beyond what a human could have. Yeah. You know, so, so for many folks, these are going to be very, very useful uh, uh, machines, if you want to call them machine. Yeah, machines, AIs. Did you see the movie Her? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Okay, so we're we're not far from that. Mm -hmm. So. So, so I also know that the, we're not that far from ex machina uh, either. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, so, yeah. So I also know that these, uh, <coughs> like these robots and everything like the, the AI is being trained on models and the model training depends on the, on the data, like on the training data. So the video that I saw that is basically they train this model on a training data and then they gave a demo on a training data itself. So, yes. so, the, so the quality, so the quality of the of the experience will depend on the on the quality of training data. Yes. Now, if we go to, uh, go to uh, the therapist like scenario, then are there? But then it also depends how. Like, let's say if there are thousand data sets of uh, a good therapist session, but only like one or two that are effective, won't it be harder for AI to figure out the right? Thing. There's not one it's or two a, that's effective. I mean, there's there's millions that are effective for certain things, sure. And it will train on every YouTube that's ever been made. It'll train on every uh, uh, lecture that was ever given on psychotherapy. It'll give a, a train on every lecture that was given on technique. It'll train on voices and pauses and hems and ahs, you know, and, and idiosyncrasies. It'll make itself sound more human. This is what I mean, why people need to guard their minds. But do you think that training data is going to be the limiting factor? Is that what you're saying? So like, let's take an example of humor. So like, so AI sucks at humor right now because the because to be good at humor is already so difficult for even humans because the training data, even for humans, is very limited, the good humor training data. So that's why AI still sucks at that. So even though there is a corpus of good humor, but the, but the percentage of good versus the total data is very very small for humor and i was thinking that what do you mean it's small what do you mean it's small so what kind of you, humor? first of all first of all humor depends on the developmental stage of the of the listener some people find fart jokes funny right little kids see things banging into each other as hilarious right other people find irony or sarcasm funny other people find you know puns funny other people find so what people find funny is totally different depending on people right so the ai will also, be able to know what level you are right but there's and, also quality of humor right so like let's say when i do you know how many netflix spe comedy specials there's been in the last 10 years but not all of them are successful no Only not right so the machine knows how much applause and how much laughter it got and how many people watched it mm-hmm so it will know far more than a human will about what's funny for an individual. It'll be able to instantly tell you the demographic of who watched that, you know, uh, Dave Chappelle, for example, right? And what got the laughs, what didn't get the laughs. Mm -hmm. And it'll be able to, you know, you're the, you're the computational guy. It'll be able to do some kind of factor analysis and figure out what about it was funny and, and what, if you changed it, would make it not funny. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't think humor is going to be a problem for the for the AIs. Mm -hmm. And remember, so it can far, mix all kinds of things together, right? Too. Remember the knowledge base. Mm -hmm. or, or were you thinking that they they couldn't be funny? Uh, I was thinking it would be harder for them to get to that. So they will eventually get funny. 
Right. But it will take longer for them because the how long do you think? How long do you think? Part. How long do you think it'll take? Uh, definitely after AGI, because even an average human. Well, what what do you mean by AGI? All right, people mean different things by artificial general intelligence. What do you mean by after AGI? So what I meant like uh, like human like capability uh, of of understanding uh, things. And figuring out things. Well, we know right, now. Capacity. We know that they've reached a level of they've surpassed the average human, and everyone I've spoken to believes that they're going to pass all humans combined, or the, and the most intelligent human within what a year or two. So they have passed humans in with the LLMs. And, I mean, just with with that capacity. Yeah, go ahead. So they have passed humans in terms of capabilities uh, that require uh, memories and anal analytical ability. So that's uh, because they work on data, right? So if, if anything that requires memory or analyzing data, they are already better at, at, at that okay. than humans. All right. right? So which part so are they missing? Still, which part are they missing? So I think it's the thing that we talked about last time, like the agency or the or the capacity to figure out which what is better than the other. Like this, well, no, this they, they, don't misunderstand me. I said they lacked their independent agency. But if you gave it the uh, uh, what do you what do you guys call it? The object function, the objective function, or what's the word for it? When you tell the computer what you want, and you say I want you to make people laugh. I want you to make people laugh. Right, that becomes its purpose, right? So it didn't it didn't come up with that goal on its own. That was given to it by the human. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's also mm -hmm. trained on human data, right? So so that's not agent that's not independent agency. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Not yet. Mm -hmm. When we get to independent agency, we're talking at least a you know, ASI, right? Artificial super intelligence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay it's going to force us to become conscious that's the deal that's the fun part yeah uh, so i was thinking that even if uh, they eventually there will be a time when the when a robot will be or or an ai robot will be better than most therapists uh, probably because of the amount of data it will have uh, is that you saying that are right? you saying that I am speculating that, that yeah. eventually it will I agree. I agree. Better. I agree. I agree. Most therapists, almost all. Uh, better than better than most therapists, but there will always be uh, scenarios where it's gonna be like a corner case, or it's gonna be where people need like a human touch. Or, or they just like want a, a human, right? Yeah, they just want a human. They want a human, they, and also the, uh, the machine will never have the human energy or authentic yeah. warmth, right? Mm -hmm. or authentic yeah. uh, earlier I was I was uh, the analogy of a, of a hen taking care of an egg her egg and giving it giving it warmth with her body but also the warmth of her attention you know the uh, or the way that the Taoists put it I think is the the milk of human kindness right the, the nourishment of human kindness that's not gonna go away and people want humans I mean I hope <laughs> I hope, right? Mm -hmm. No, they do. They will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, like a, like a, like a, attracts like. Birds of a feather flock together, right? Mm -hmm. And it could make us all more human, you know, and more more finally we stop taking for granted the, the the glorious experience of being a human. Right, right now most people just take it for granted. They go, oh yeah, I get blah, blah, blah. I get up, I go to work. Uh, life sucks. A lot of humans live like that. But this could force the issue now that the, now that there's not the work necessarily and there's plenty of everything, if we make it, then people are going to go, well, wait a minute, what is special about us? And what's special about us is that we're conscious. Not, not that we have minds, because the machine has a mind. You know, the, the muscle has muscle memory. Tissues have minds, you know, uh, Mike Levin. You know, all kinds of other creatures have minds. Trees have a minds of a sort, right? Probably pretty sophisticated mm -hmm. ones. They just move very, very slowly. Mm -hmm. But consciousness, that's something else. That's a different category. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So are you agreeing with me that the, the therapists are going to, I mean, have some real competition? Yeah, that I agree that there's going to be real competition. Yeah. But then, yeah, but so I was thinking that... I know people who are using AIs right now for dream interpretation. <laughs> and they're not bad. I mean, as, as shallow dream interpretations go, right? So, so, in the, so in that context where <coughs> there's going to be competition, but then there are always going to be people who want to be in touch. Let's say if we have someone who is about to graduate from high school and they are thinking whether they should go to med school to basically uh, become like a, like a psychiatrist or a therapist in the future, what would you, what would you think about, like, like what, should they, what do you think they should be focusing on to have a career in the future? in this in this field well i can tell you what they should not be focusing on which is the current model which basically looks at the the human brain as a receptacle for i was going to say chemicals that were engineered by pharmaceutical companies and i was going to go down that whole road of like looking at the the whole human as this kind of a, a consumer and, a, and a, you know, an end user of things that are developed by large corporations to make money, right? And I think it's important to know that they, these companies are run by business people and they have, a, they have an ethical duty to make money, right? They're not doctors, they're not, they're not therapists, they're not, their goals are fundamentally different than the, the goals of a, of, a, of a healer. Their goal is to make money, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that's gotten out of control, obviously. I think that's apparent to many people. But, but, so, but that's not gonna be the issue because the machine's gonna be able to model receptors and proteins and all this other stuff, and we'll have plenty of that, I think. Repeat your question again, I wanna make sure. I, I mean, I, I got distracted by that. I hate to speak uh, ill of, of an entire industry, but I don't see any way around it when it comes to pharmaceuticals. But, so repeat the question. Yeah, so like for someone who is graduating from high school and want to go to med school and develop a career in that, uh, what would you advise to them so that they can become, become successful at, like at some... But you can stop like it right maybe, there, become successful. How about that? Just become successful. Yeah, become, become successful, yeah. There's only one way to go, and that's consciousness, to become more and more conscious. Then you're truly successful. No matter what happens, you're truly successful. And you, 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 it's, it's, it's the difference between a, a dull, boring, fearful, anxious life and a life that's the opposite of all those things. So yeah, they have to become increasingly conscious and they should start in high school, definitely. Middle school, a lot of them are already inclined that way if you don't distort them. Adolescence, there's, oh, there was a quote from Harry Stack Sullivan. It goes, what is it about life that turns us in adulthood into pale caricatures of what we were as adolescents. Adolescents are very idealistic creatures and, and they, and God bless them. And, and they, and they, they want to know the truth and they want to know God. They want to know what's going on, right? It's, it's their nature, right? It's they're, they're curious and, 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 and wonderful creatures but then they get distorted by the ambient culture which becomes materialistic or or you know how much money can you make or how much influence can, how many followers can you get all these kind of weird weird things that come and go but underneath that of course is is the consciousness itself the natural principle the the essence right the, the thing that wants to that the thing that's making them grow the thing that that is the source of them and so consciousness i mean you're asking me right so i'm going to give you my answer my answer is that consciousness is the only way to go deepening consciousness and deepening sensitivity and 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 learning about the the world that we're the world that we're actually and not the artificial world that's been put together by the by the uh, corporations and the government and the lawyers that's not the real world that's just an art uh, that world will come and go and it looks like it may be going because it, it'll collapse right it happens over and over and over so the only thing that can withstand that, not the only thing, but the, the thing that withstands that and even flourishes with that is someone who's evolving consciousness, right? Because they'll take whatever it is and use it to further their consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so what looks like an obstacle is in fact an opportunity.
That's the way the world is set up in reality. It's set up for learning and learning who we are, what we are, where we come from, where we're going. These are the, these are the questions of life. And the, the tragedy is that a lot of people don't start thinking about it. I mean, not a lot of, well, it's not uncommon to find people saying, yeah, well, I wanted to think about that, but I just didn't have time. And then now they're, they're 60, 70, 80 years old, and now they're desperate to find out about this stuff because they're facing death for sure, right? Not as an abstract possibility. And so yeah. seeking wisdom and consciousness and, and uh, the appropriate mood with which to, to approach the, the world. Mm -hmm. Excuse me one second. I got a low battery warning. Okay, does that answer that? Yeah, that that helps. Uh, so as a follow up, I was so thinking... going into medicine is a great idea, right? Mm -hmm. And learn to use the AIs as your tools, right? Or to help guide the AIs. Or going into psychiatry, a great idea, as long as you understand what why you're doing it. But if you're going into medicine, and I saw this too in med school, I was shocked by it. But some people were going into medicine for the money. That makes no sense. None whatsoever. I mean, you may make a lot of money, but, but think of what you've sold your soul for. To go in because you truly feel uh, compassion for people and you want to help, or you've suffered a lot yourself, and you want to transmute that suffering into something positive. The world is set up for you to do that. So definitely, yeah, learn. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay, another question? Uh, yeah, I have another question. It's a, it's on a different topic altogether. Okay. Uh, so let me... Yeah, so this is from one of your videos on turning the light around. So where you were... Oh, saying, good, 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 good. So we take a pencil and then we bring it again. Yeah, that's a crude, and... crude metaphor for it, but okay, go ahead. So, so when I do that, uh, I have this like sense of space that I'm feeling. Uh, uh, and then you, and you said to go to the source of that. And, and I don't know how to go from that feeling of feeling space to the source of that. Good question. That is the source. But it's, it's the clear light of awareness with no objects. I mean, that's you see, there's no descriptions for God. There's no descriptions for for the the uh, the primary creative essence. There, there, we we don't have the faculties to to perceive it with with eyes or ears or thought or with anything, right? So to us, it appears like a, a black emptiness. Mm -hmm. But that black emptiness, when you, now when you turn the light around and, and, there, and you know, you've, you've, you know, in, the, in, in uh, alchemical terms, you've, you've, you've uh, fired the pill, right? Or, or there's other words for it. You know, the, you, the embryo has, the, the golden flower has blossomed. That's the one from the book. Then you wake up and all of a sudden the whole, not just, you don't real not just back here is what's back here, black and featureless out here is luminous and gorgeous beyond belief. Right? Mm -hmm. Because now you've realized that, that, that it's all arising from the same thing. They differ in name, right? The, the, the trees in the sky and the earth and the, and the, we'll call it the manifest world has a different name than the, uh, the emptiness of space, mm -hmm. but they come from the same source, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. so there's being and non-being, but mm -hmm. they both come from one one source. Yeah, and that's that's the nameless. That's the Tao that cannot be spoken. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That uh, uh, about the source of that isn't what I am. This is, by the feeling. way, now is a good time for you personally to go to the Tao Te Ching and make sure you read the notes always with these books, these beautiful new translations that we have into English of these great classics. This one's short. Uh, you got to read the notes. 
Right, because it's a different culture, different time, different language, different symbols, different, you know, traditions. But they come from the same source. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so I was uh, feeling that that every time I do this and this feeling of emptiness and like just blank space, uh, sometimes I wonder, is it I'm imagining that or is No, you're imagining this. <laughs> you're imagining this. You're imagining both of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. You know, you know about Markov blankets, right? Yeah. yeah. You've got to have a representation of, of the outside world ostensibly yeah. so what does that representation yeah. inside inside the markov blanket look like what does it look like just what does it look like well it looks like trees and skies and and grass and birds mm -hmm. it'll make sense it, it study the free energy principle and uh and it, and it's very exciting especially for computationalists and psychologists we we finally made a breakthrough for this century right between stephen wolfram Carl Friston and uh, my, uh, Levin. We've got, we've got a new synthesis of psychology, biology, and physics, and everybody's coming into accord. And although they won't get all the way to consciousness, they're going to come face to face with the fact that they need something there that glues this all together because time and space won't do it. <laughs> it's hilarious. So time's now seen just as as the the process of the computation. The progress of the computation you can't rewind the computation <coughs> it's great stuff for the for those that are like more eggheaded mm -hmm. but it. for the people that are not eggheads you know you don't need to know all that stuff necessarily just do this practice now do it for 100 days right and do it all the time right you, you can turn the light around while we're talking you can turn the light around right now and you see how your your attention like the attention of a, of a hen on her egg right back at the at the chicken coop mm -hmm. her attention's still there even though she's out you know going and pecking around and creating problems with all the neighbors the hens you know and they're all like scrabbling about this but her attention is still back there and so as you go about your day your 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 intent is is singular and it's unbending you want to know truth mm -hmm. and so you just turn the light around all day all day long you don't have to be anywhere special and kind of the more dramatic or the more negative, for example, the thing is, the better it is for turning the light around. And then you're more composed because you've got the mood of a warrior. You know what you're about. Everybody around you may be lost, you know, running around like chickens with their heads cut off. Sorry, chickens. Right. But you know what you're doing and why. OK, sir. Yeah. yeah. Anything else before we stop? Uh, I just had one more question on, okay. from one of your tweets. Go ahead. Good. Uh, so, good. 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 So yeah, this one is on. I think this was was on stopping and seeing, turning the light around. And the the main thing was the directive focus on the center is nuanced. Uh, and you said uh, the center is omnipresent and creative. The whole universe is within it. Uh, it indicates the mechanism of creation. You focus on this and enter the gate that is all and then you said to focus means to focus on this as a hint not to become rigidly fixated absolutely yeah so sometimes people are too tight or they're too loose right they fall into oblivion they're too loose they they get their minds get all tied up you know like they're saying well wait a minute if this goes to this and this if a goes to b and b goes to c and then c what's the relationship with c they, you know they get they get their minds get obsessed and too tight so it's a gentle attention there's a ge gentleness is the way and firmness if necessary but you use power not force right there's a, there's a, a thousand so this is again where the Dao ching is invaluable but the point here that's that that ties in with what we were saying before is what's called the center in those other things. What what was the source of that that quotation, by the way? Uh, so this is uh, that Louis uh, Main. I don't see. I think it's Louis. Yeah, I think it. Yeah, it just says on stopping and seeing. I don't see any like source. It sounds like uh, 
19th century Taoist Louis Ming. But at any rate, the, this, the, the clear light back here is the center. And eventually, you know, you do, you do this practice for, for 100 days or whatever, and then you realize that the center is in the heart. And the center is everywhere there is. That this, everything is the center, ultimately. All right? I know that sounds confusing, but we're, but we're jumping between two. Why don't we go back to that uh, later if you want to, right? But right now, I don't want okay. to mix it up too much with the, the secret of the golden flower. Okay, done. All right? Done. All right, good. Keep the faith. Guard your mind. Good. All right, take care. Thank you. Bye.